Okay, so what we're looking at here, when we're looking at DNA replication, first we look at the nucleus. As we zoom into the nucleus of the cell, we can see the chromosome. Here it is, a nice double-stranded DNA molecule. Again, note the hydrogen bonds holding the A and T and the C and Gs together. Those are the bonds that are keeping the two strands together. Now, in order to replicate DNA, the very first thing, of course, that we have to do is to separate these two strands. And then, of course, we need to, to uh, split the hydrogen bonds in between A and T and C and G. This enormous pink blob here represents an enzyme called DNA helicase. And DNA helicase does its job by engaging with the double strand, as we see here, and splitting the hydrogen bonds, forcing the two double-stranded uh, strands apart. So here we have the top strand being forced upwards, bottom strand being forced downwards. Uh, it's important to note here, of course, that the strands would normally reattach, um, but what we do in the cell is we use a number of, we call SSBs, single-stranded DNA binding proteins, which bind to the single-stranded DNA along the top and bottom, preventing the two strands from coming back together. So as long as these SSBs are attached along the top and bottom strand, the two strands will not recombine. Now, what we didn't see is that Hemocase has also laid down a primer at the very beginning of the replication fork when it was over here. And as the replication fork continues from left to right, an enzyme called DNA polymerase 3 is able to attach to the primer, which is over here, and follow the replication fork as it moves. The reason that this polymerase molecule is able to follow the replication fork is in this case, from the top strand perspective, the, the replication fork is moving from a three to five prime direction. Now, what RNA, uh, DNA polymerase three does is it sets down complementary base pairs. So when it sees an A, it puts down a T. When it sees a C, it puts down a G. And it can only do that by running along the top strand from three to five prime direction. DNA is anti-parallel, so when DNA polymerase 3 is laying down the DNA, it's laying it down from a 5 to 3 prime direction, as we can see here. So what we see is these SSBs are also released from the strand once polymerase has made it. Don't forget they are single-stranded binding proteins. They don't bind to double strand, which the, RNA polym the DNA polymerase, I beg your pardon, has made. Interesting to see here, of course, that the new DNA is anti-parallel. It runs from 5 to 3 prime. Don't forget polymerase 3 only runs along from 3 to 5 prime. Okay, the top strand is called a leading strand because it happens first and is relatively easy to understand. Here we get a continuous replication. Now when we look at the bottom strand, we're not going to get a continuous replication of DNA. Instead, along the bottom strand, or lagging strand as we call it here, we get these things called Akazaki fragments. Um, why do we get Akazaki fragments? Well, the major problem here, of course, is that DNA is anti-parallel. It was very easy in the top strand because it was moving in the correct direction. But on the bottom strand, it cannot move in that same direction. It cannot move from left to right because the bottom strand runs from five to three. Don't forget it runs from only from three to five. So the DNA polymerase three will happily run from right to left, but not from left to right, okay? So how do we fix that problem? Well, the good news here is we use exactly the same enzymes as above to make the Akazaki fragments, as you can see here. And here we can see the beginning of the process. So as the replication fork is opened by DNA helicase, first thing we do, as we did with the top strand, is we lay down a primer, an RNA primer. And of course, DNA primase is the enzyme that lays down the primer. Once the primer has been attached, the problem is that the helicase molecule cannot the, sorry, the polymerase molecule cannot simply join in here and continue along with helicase because it's running in the wrong direction. So instead, it moves in the other direction. So it will engage with the RNA primer, as it does always. Here's polymerase 3 engaging with the RNA primer and running in the opposite direction. Now this will fix and give us a nice little piece of DNA running all the way down and along to the end. However, as the replication fork continues, as helicase over here continues to move right, it's going to leave a gap. And that's the reason that we get these Akazaki fragments. Each time we end up with a gap, we have to repeat the process. So let's watch that happen. Okay, let's just see that process again. So here comes polymerase, laying it down and joining up. What we get then, of course, is a series of RNA primers and DNA fragments called Akazaki fragments. We have to get rid of this 
uh, the RNA primers and link together the pieces of DNA. And we use two enzymes. The first one is polymerase 1. What polymerase 1 is going to do is it's going to replace uracil with thymine. If you replace uracil with thymine, you're basically converting RNA into DNA. The second enzyme that we see engaging with the molecule over here is DNA ligase. What it does is it creates phosphodiester bonds in between the three to five prime carbons of adjacent uh, molecules. This links the DNA together, getting rid of the Okazaki fragments and leaving us with a nice continuous piece of DNA that is complementary to the lagging strand. So, once again, looking at, the, looking at the procedure. On the top strand, the continuous replication of the leading strand is possible because the polymerase molecule moves happily from three to five. On the bottom strand, which is anti-parallel, which means it runs from five to three, the RNA, DNA polymerase three will not run so happily along that. Instead, it will run from right to left, and each time the replication fork opens further, it leaves behind a space. We have to repeat the procedure to fill each space. The net result of all of that is a pieces of Akazaki fragments separated by RNA primers. Then, of course, don't forget the last two enzymes, polymerase 1, which replaces the RNA primers with DNA by replacing uracil with thiamine, and secondly, and most importantly, DNA ligase, which links the Akazaki fragments together. Without this, there would be no continuous nice piece of DNA. Once we have two double-stranded, complementary pieces of DNA, we can re reorientate them into a helix structure, and we have now replicated our DNA completely. Okay, I hope that helps you to understand, and please refer to this video as often as you need to. Uh, ask me any questions if you need to as well. But uh, practice makes perfect, so get in there and practice drawings a few times. Okay, thank you.